I am not going to give you guys an intro today just because I don't really have much to say and I want to get into today's um, interview. I go, it's not an interview, our talk today. Um, so let's introduce our guest for today, Tracy Cortez. Hi. Say hi. hi. You? <laughs> um, I put UFC fighter and creator because that's what you had on your Instagram account. Is there anything else you like refer yourself as passionate lover okay guy, okay sister, <laughs> sister. Friend, no. i love it okay so guys i met tracy last year in i want to say like july right no a little, no no august yeah i want to say like end of august maybe. okay yeah because i started prep in september so mm-hmm. it was august yeah yeah uh i remember cj called me and he was like hey uh you come to this go shoot and I was like, okay, who else is going to be there? Because it's always like, I'm like, I I hope I have someone as an athlete that I know. And he's like, well, you don't really know anyone who's coming, but I really want you to meet Tracy. She's a fighter. And I was like, okay, okay. And I was like, I did not know what to expect because fighter. I was like, okay, is she girly? Is she not girly? Because girls who are not girly, not that I'm like super girly, but girls who are not like into their femininity yeah. is always like a weird vibe. Like it's like, they're nice and everything, but we just don't click. So yeah. I was like, I don't know what to expect. Am I going to like, CJ's like, you're, you're going to love her. And I'm like, okay, are we going to click? So I didn't know. And then I met you and I was like, okay, I was super surprised. <laughs> you, I was like, you, look, you told me. Yeah. Did you I? Go, you go, you're a lot girlier than I thought. I was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, she was wearing her makeup. She's all dolled up. And I was like, cause sometimes you don't know how girls are going to react. Like it's a ghost shoot, right? It's like, I like, you know, I like to add a glad me. I like to look nice yeah. and presentable. And when I saw Tracy, I was like, oh, she likes to get ready too. I like it. That's something we could click on. what did you think about me when you first met me? Yeah. Dude, I'm like, dude, what a fucking badass. Okay. Okay. I, you know what? I thought you were really down to earth. Oh, thanks. I thought you were really down to earth because yeah. you have this edgy look to yourself. Mm-hmm. Right? And I go, oh, shit. She, I go, she might be fucking mean. Like, no. I don't know why I see it. Okay. I was like, yeah. damn, I hope she's not a fucking bitch. <laughs> I go, but no, you, you, like, we started talking. I'm like, oh, she's, she's cool. Like, yeah. she's down to earth. You know, you were, at the time, you were, like, kind of soft spoken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and we're both trying to, like, catch the vibe. And it was just, it was, it was dope. I think what helped was, like, cause I'm, I was like, you know, CJ spoke so highly of you. So I was like, okay, like, I wanna make an effort for her and stuff. And then I was like, hey, like, cause we had, the, like, this, like, three, four hour gap. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hey, you wanna go, like, shopping or something <laughs> she's like hell yeah let's go and i felt so okay guys we were in downtown chicago and i was like i'm a little yeah. nervous i don't like to go out with myself like that and i was like nah i ain't nervous with her i'm like <laughs> she can be someone up if someone tries something so yeah i think that helped us kind of click and then dinner was really well yeah that night too yeah. so we went in we did go shopping yeah we did yeah. you have your little nike back I, I do I, I came with it you did i was gonna I ask did. you a shit at the shoe i did um but yeah so she was coming to houston cj was like hey i'm gonna bring tracy to houston for a ghost shoot um i think she'd be awesome for the podcast i was like hell yeah if she wants to be on the podcast i'd love to have her so i have a lot of good questions for you today okay okay you ready yeah okay so just a little bit of background about yourself for those of you who don't know um where did you grow up how old were you when you started into ufc just give us a little bit of background uh grew up in phoenix arizona okay born and raised okay both parents are from mexico okay uh so i'm like traditional Mexican Mexicana. yes traditional uh-huh. Mexican background in our household we weren't allowed or else spoke as Spain to speak English oh shit so Spanish was our first language uh-huh. I could read it right all that uh-huh. uh youngest of I have a four I have three big brothers and I'm the youngest okay so I, I grew up very tomboyish yeah yeah very tomboyish y luego um just following them yeah you know because I was like it was always like the the leader, and then uh-huh. we would follow my, our big brother. Yeah, and he wrestled, so we, we kind of just all like a domino effect. We yeah. all wrestled, uh, and then he passed away, and then it kind of you know when you lose people in your family, mm-hmm. um, he was like the tree trunk of our family. Yeah, we kind of just fell off. My dad kicked me out. Mm-hmm. I was I was fucking up in life, like drugs, partying, drop high school dropout like bad yeah and then um i started training and just like you hear it all the time you know like it saved me do you it was there like a switch like did you get a rock bottom where like i need to fucking change myself i i mean i want to say that that because so much was going on in my life Mm -hmm. it's like a blur like i don't remember much okay 
Isn't that crazy? Like, yeah. Yeah, I don't remember much. I just remember training and finding happiness in it. Mm. Okay. You know, and, and not feeling happiness for so long after the loss of my brother. Yeah. I kind of wanted to stick to it. So when I found it, I held on to it and I just, kept, I ran with it. Yeah. Do you, you know, growing up in a Latino household, do you, was your parent, were your parents ever like, no, fighting isn't for, for niñas? Yeah, yeah. No? Oh, 100%. Yeah? Okay. 100%. They didn't let me. So growing up, they didn't let me, they didn't let me do any sport. Okay. You know, when I say. Yeah, I mean. Tri- they traditional like, i mean what is that for why do you need to be in a sport yes yeah. traditional where it's like go to the kitchen yeah. here's a sponge go watch the restrooms yeah uh ponte a lavar, watch your brother you know i'm just yeah. like well i'm gonna go play outside and i'm just a kid yeah yeah you know i'm gonna go play outside and they're like no ¿Qué vas a hacer afuera? yeah like go Ayúdale a tu mamá a cocinar. yeah and i'm like you're like, and I'll be in the I house. I don't want to cook. Just looking at my my brother's play, so it it was it was very unfair. Yeah, I didn't understand it. Mm-hmm. Um, looking back now, it did mold me to a certain extent, you know, mm-hmm. to who I am now, my 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 beliefs, and but I was I was the black sheep, you know. Yeah. I did what I wanted. I got in trouble for doing what they were doing. Yeah, that's what I was uh, to say. That if, if, so by black sheep, I mean that. Where it's like I was just doing what they were doing. Yeah, and I would get in trouble for because it because you were a female. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when did you? So you got into the fighting, and, and when did you say, "Okay, I'm gonna actually like try doing this professionally"? What? Uh, did someone scout you out? And you're like, "Oh, she's actually pretty good," or were you yeah, like, "I just yeah." This? So I was. I want to say I was eighteen. Okay, I was eighteen. I had just turned eighteen. That I said, they say, hey, you're really good. You know, like, you're competing with these actual, like, pro fighters. Mm-hmm. They weren't in the UFC yet, but they were pro. Yeah. And uh, do you want to do an amateur fight? I was like, sure, let's go. You know, I had my first amateur fight, knocked a girl out in, like, 34 seconds. Oh, my god! Yeah, and I was just 18. So I, I remember hitting her, and she fell, and I kind of just looked around at my coaches, like, what do I do? And they're like, go! And I'm like, I wait! And oh, I go. Oh, shit! I know. And it was, it was fucking, it was intense, and it was... Like that rush mm-hmm. that I just never found again. And I was like, I need to go. I need to do. I want to do it again. Yeah. You know. Did fighting ever scare you? No. Yeah. No. I think just growing up with your brothers helped a lot, yeah. right? A hundred percent. Fighting with them. Yeah. And I mean like fighting. Like fists. Like yeah. they would fuck me up. Damn. Yeah. I had long, long brown hair. Parecía india. Así como. Y me jalaban de las. Like they'll pull me from my hair. Like get the fuck over here. And, oh shit. Yeah. Like it was bad. Damn. Like they would put it on me. Well, damn, so you started pretty young then. Yeah. 18, you're 29 now? Yeah. 29. You've been doing it for 10 years? Years. Yeah. How you, are you not tired of it yet? No, I feel like you're like, I'm, I want to keep going. If anything, I have like this fuel in me where I'm just like, damn, yeah. I'm not done yet. Yeah. Like this hunger, a drive. Where yeah. it's, I'm not done yet. I want more. I need more. Yeah. Well, you started so young and I feel like, I mean, I know people say all the time, like, old when you're young and people are like 30s are your prime i'm like no nah, that's a lie but now that i'm hitting my 30s i'm like i haven't even reached my prime 30s are gonna be my yeah. prime you know so I, I can, oh my god i feel the same way I'm, yeah. I, I just turned 29 and i just feel like my brother's like yeah oh, you're getting older you know and i'm like hell no bro i feel like i still feel young in a way yeah very young where i have a lot to learn and i just i'm like i haven't even hit my prime yet that's yeah. crazy okay so what kind of training goes in to prepare you for a fight um, and you were telling me a little bit about it. I was like, damn, I didn't realize how like hardcore it was. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's intense. So <clears throat> I train two hours in the morning. Mm-hmm. I rest for about two, three hours. I train another two hours at night or in the evening. Mm-hmm. And then depending on my sessions, I'll go for a night, night run. Yeah. So about three times a day. Yeah. And I, I remember asking you, cause I was like, when she was telling me this, I was like, how do you recover? You do a lot for recovery as well, right? I do. I do. I, you were like, I take ice baths regularly. Yeah. I was like, hell no, oh girl. Oh my God, I know. Because I was like, man, is your body not exhausted? I'm sure it gets tired, right? Oh, absolutely. You know, there's times where I'm laying down and I just, I could feel for just being lazy. Yeah. Not having someone come and massage me the mm-hmm. night before, stretch me. I'm, I'll, 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 I'll wake up and um, I feel it. I physically feel, I'll be laying, I'm like, fuck, I don't I'm sure you got you. you yeah, know, yeah. You being an athlete too, you feel it. We're just yeah. like shit, dude. My body's broken right now. Yeah. But I don't know what it is inside where it's just like, okay, we have to get up and you let's go. Get let's up. get yeah. it. Yeah. You know, uh, it's like a switch. Yeah. 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 It's a different kind of like when you're not. I'm sure when you're not prepared for a fight, you go and you work out because you love it. But you, it's 
and the I think the consistency helps you retain that like discipline and a routine. Yeah. But when you're like, I'm sure it's like when I was on prep, it's like this whole different animal. Like, yeah. You don't even you don't even let yourself think about how tired you are because you're like, I gotta fucking go. Mm. I gotta get up and go again. Yeah. I don't have the time, and I'm not gonna sulk in the fact that I'm tired because no one's coming to save me. No you one. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So I get that. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, you just it's you the know? same. It's the same. Oh, like shit, with yeah. cardio, you're like. You, you don't want to do it. Like, yeah. I don't want to do two hours on the Stairmaster, mm. but no one's going to do it for me. And if I don't do it, I'm behind on my goals. I'm not, you know, I, I don't, you know, with prep, it's like, I didn't want to look back and be like, I should have done that extra cardio session. You, you know what I call those? I call those the ghost. Okay. That they, they just hunt you, you know, when it, when it comes down, when it's for me personally, like mm -hmm. that fight week, the, damn, I should have done this or I could have done this or I should have done this more. I don't allow those to consume me. Yeah. It's like, damn, let me just do what I have to do mm -hmm. so I don't feel that when the time comes. Yeah, exactly. You know? Exactly. I yeah. think it's better because I've done preps where it's like, okay, could I have, not that I could have done more, but maybe I should have started earlier and like with this one, I was like, no, like I want to make sure that I do every freaking minute, I give it everything I have because th those ghosts, they suck. Like, yeah. especially like, I'm sure like if you were like, mm -hmm. you didn't make weight and you're like, fuck, I shouldn't have eaten that burger. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like that one burger like, I'm sure was not worth, like, the disappointment that day. 100%. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, you're an athlete, so you yeah. know. Um, do you remember the first time you got punched in the face? No. No, you don't no. remember? You know, hold, hold, it's because I get I get asked this question, not this one specifically, uh -huh. but I do get asked, like, doesn't it hurt when they hit yeah, you? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's just, it, it's because of the adrenaline, you don't feel nothing. You really? honestly don't feel nothing. Nothing. Like... Only when I've had a punch where it's just like, you, like you just see like black a little bit where you're just like, holy shit. Like, yeah. I just got hit. You know, face. like, damn, this girl hits hard. Yeah. But to say like, oh, that one hurt. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, no. But I'm sure you got punched. I've got kicked, kicked, okay. ki kicked in the stomach where I'm like, oh, me sacó like yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, and I had to fake it. Yeah, yeah. Because they can read it. You know, yeah. they, we read body language, we read facial expression. Like, to the T. Yeah. So I, I, and I have a pretty good poker face and she hit me in the stomach and, um, it's on YouTube. You just see me go up uh, and I'm like, let's go. Yeah. Like, like if it didn't hurt. <laughs> yeah. But I could, like, I couldn't fucking breathe. Oh my God. I couldn't breathe. Masako, I'm right. sure like because of your brothers, you probably got punched and hit at a very young <laughs> early age. Right. So you're like, I'm used to getting hit. Fuck. I wish. <laughs> I wish that were the case. Okay. So yeah. So you. I'm sure no matter how much you get hit, you never get used to getting no, hit, right? It no. always comes it probably hurts more in training. Okay. Or I'm like, oh damn, that one's gonna that one's gonna leave yeah. me a bruise. Oh, so you think oh yeah, because I think I guess on fight day, your adrenaline is so high you don't feel yeah, it. Exactly. But when you're in practice, I'm sure you're like, fuck, this mm -hmm. one fucking hurt. Yeah. Especially the guys, because I train with nothing but guys. Uh -huh. So when I'm sparring and uh when I'm out of camp. I train with all, I spar with the guys when I'm in camp. That's when we like fly girls in. Uh -huh. and I I have I make sure I train with only girls. So when I'm out of camp, like recently, I was sparring, and the guys don't want to hit me hard in the head or anything, you know. Mm -hmm. And they they hit me with the hard body shot, girl. I fell so hard I couldn't. I, I was just there. I and I just seeing life flash before my eyes, like oh my god, you motherfucker. Oh my god. He goes, why you have to hit me hard? You know, and it's a friend of mine. I'm just like, oh, you fucking assholes. Like, oh. Yeah, no, I'm sure. Uh, so during camp, you like to train more with females to prepare you for the fight? Yeah. Okay. Just because it's a different look. Yeah. You know, the speed, yeah. their movement, their flexibility. When you're, when you're like, clinching them, yeah. the flexibility, the strength, everything. is different. Yeah. But do you think training with the guys helps you? Absolutely. Okay. Because even the girls, they feel me like, damn, Tracy, you're strong. Yeah. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I'm sure it helps for that. Yeah. Um. I know you were supposed to fight in December and had to pull out. What was the hardest part about your decision of pulling out? <sighs> that it wasn't my decision. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, I got a, I got criticized a lot. for. Yeah. I think that's the first time I've ever gotten negative, like, backlash. Yeah. Is that what they call it? Backlash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was the first time I've ever experienced that. Okay. Um, So that alone was was a, was difficult. Yeah. Just not it not being my choice. Mm -hmm. Uh prepping hard you know you being a competitor as well like the prep how it takes a toll on you physically mentally mm -hmm. emotionally i'm just like you put you give it all you have for that one day for that one day yeah and for the night before to, for the doctors to say hey you're just not yeah you're not clear you mm -hmm. can't fight i i it, it you go from like being at the highest of the high to just 
yeah. crushed. Yeah. No, I'm crushed. sure. I mean, it was it was hard. It was really hard on me. And to this day, everyone just, you know, they still talk their shit, but it's okay. It's okay. People are going to talk what they want to talk. Uh, and I think you have, like, one of the things ends. I love about Tracy is, like, her support system, from what I've seen, is really good. I feel like you have a lot of supporters. Like, when you pulled out of your fight, because I was, where was I? Because I think our sh my show day was very close to her fight. And I, I would say. It send, was that same week. I texted yeah, you. Yeah, it was You texted week. me. I texted you because mm -hmm. I would keep up with you. And I would send her, when I was doing my cardio, if I had, like, if I listened to something good or motivating, I would send it to you. Yeah, yeah. Like, this, like hopefully it helps you, too. Because yeah. like, I knew she was preparing for a fight, too. Um, but when I saw that you didn't fight, I, I know I'm, I, I messaged you that day because I was like, I was so prepared. I was like ready to like watch. And yeah, when I, my first thing was like, okay, if she got pulled out, it's because I know how hardworking she is. It's not because she wanted to pull out. I knew that that decision was like a very hard decision. So, and I let mean, me just say, I get asked a lot, like, oh, what's a woman that like a female that has yet to inspire me? And I've never had an answer, mm -hmm. but being in the, being we're in like camp or prep mm -hmm. at the same time mm -hmm. and seeing you go through it. And then I was going through it. And you, I think you're a little bit more vulnerable than I am on social yeah, media. Yeah. You talk more. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I, I, I'm I a little bit more. I get shy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I get shy. Uh, I would see you and I could relate. And I'm like, damn, that shit inspired me. Like, yeah. all right, let me get, let me fucking get to it. Thanks, babe. So at that moment, like you were very inspiring. And I want to say the same. I remember coming, I, I'm this, I'm really like, for me, like, there's a lot of men who inspire me, like, motivational speakers and stuff. But for females, it's really hard. But I remember coming back from the ghost shoot and talking to Chris about you. And then, like, I watched some of your, some of the YouTubes about, like, documentaries about your story and stuff. And I was like, man, this girl is a fucking badass. And I love keeping up with you. And then during our same time, because I decided to prep. And I remember you were like, I'm going to fight this day. I'm like, okay, we're both. She's going to be in camp. She told me how hard it's going to be. So... I like felt like I leaned on you too a little bit. I'm like, okay, I know Tracy's fucking suffering right now. Uh, so yeah, if yeah. she's suffering, I can suffer too. So it's great having like that person that you can lean on. And yeah. like, I would think about you too. Cause like, you know, if I was like having a hard day during cardio, I knew how hard it is like for you too, to like go through camp, train three times a day. So I was like, let me send her something. Hopefully this helps. Cause I would see uh, you <laughs> and I would say, Fuck, Tracy, get up. Come on, you got this, girl. Like, you know, she, <laughs> yeah. she's doing it. You can do it, too. Let's get it. Thanks, babe. So, okay. Yeah. So, how important is uh, mental health in the sport? Oh, my God. I want to say that I just started... I've always heard these, like, healing journeys, mm -hmm. right? And I never really understood it up until now. And, and I only say that because... And I, I was telling you earlier in the car, the sport... We're so mentally tough, physically yeah. tough. The discipline, the the um, just what comes with fighting alone, it's it's not easy. So it's trained me to to be as tough as I am. Mm -hmm. You know, not only has it trained me physically, but mentally, it's trained me to be strong. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm really good at kind of just throwing things, you know, over the shoulder and yeah. okay, because I always have something coming up. Mm -hmm. You know, life moves so fast and I always have something coming up that recently life kind of just hit a pause for me. Mm -hmm. And it's like I'm facing everything that I just threw over my shoulder. Yeah. And I hear it all the time. These fighters were like, oh, my God, mental health, mental health. I'm like, oh, my God, like you'll yeah. be fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, uh, but it's 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 a big deal. It's it's real. It's uh, especially being I think it's even worse being um be a public figure mm -hmm. and having to deal with uh, your your own mental health while the fucking world is judging you, judging you mm -hmm. while you still have to work on social media mm -hmm. and put on a smile because you're not going to fucking post a, a video of you crying. Yeah, yeah, you exactly. Know? Yeah. So people, people forget, you know, and I say this all the time. It don't matter how many fucking followers I have. It don't matter what the fucking name is or how many dollars I have in my account. Like I'm still human. Yeah. I still work. Yeah. Just because my job isn't a nine to five doesn't mean, you know, and my job is more posting, which is mm -hmm. a luxury, in mm -hmm. my opinion, mm -hmm. doesn't mean that I don't have the same problems as the rest of the world. Yeah. So uh, I think mental health is a, a big deal yeah. in fighting, especially because a lot of fighters don't just fight for fun. You know, there's always someone always has a fucked up story. Like if you really get to know someone, mm -hmm. you're like, damn. 
I can see why you're here now. Yeah. You know, it's never like, oh, yeah, I'm fighting for fun. I enjoy it. Yeah, no. You, you know, yeah. like, no one wants to fucking get hit for fun. Yeah. So it it, it just becomes a passion. Or at least for, you know, personally, mm-hmm. I don't want to speak on other fighters, but personally, I it, it became a passion and an outlet. Mm-hmm. And um, if it weren't for fighting, I don't know where my life would be right now. Yeah. No, yeah, mental health is super important. I, I was the same way. Like, I... Because, I mean, mental health is talk, it's being talked about a little bit more, but, like, it's it's almost embarrassing. Like, oh, you don't, because if you're like, oh, I have anxiety, then people are like, oh, she's weak. Yes. Oh, I, I you know, I'm going through mental, oh, she's weak. No, fuck that. Like, I, I, that's the last thing I want anyone to ever think about me is that I'm weak. Mm-hmm. So that's why it is really hard to share it sometimes. But it also, I feel like I'm trying to be, like, more, a little bit more vulnerable because so many of us deal with mental health. And, um. You know, because we all have shit going on in our lives. No matter who you are, we all have shit going on in our lives. Obviously, as creators, we have to be a little bit more public. So we have to fake it a little bit more. Be smart. Like like you said, I don't. I want to be real, but I don't want to be posting every time I'm crying because that's depressive as fuck. Like, who wants to fucking follow that? That, No one wants to follow that, right? And people are like, I want you to be more real, but that's such a lie. You guys still want this, like, fake fairy tale, Mm -hmm. right? But it is important to dig deep into your mental health and yeah. and at least you don't have to share it. You know, I, I just went through something with dark sport and I was like, no one at that fucking shoot knew that I was going through that, right? Because I'm not going to let you think of me any less mm-hmm. just because I had to deal with something back in my room. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? So it's like, I'm dealing with it. I do do the proper steps for it. Um, but with our careers too, I think it's hard. And being the ones, being the type of people that were like so go-getters, I was just telling you this in the car, like it's hard for us to just stop and uh, think about our thoughts, yes. right? Cause we're like onto the next thing, onto the next thing. I don't have time. I don't have time. Cause I, cause honestly guys digging, taking some fucking time for yourself and looking at your demons is hard. And then coming out and, and, and facing those demons is it's, even harder. It's even harder. And then yeah. to still have to go to work and being a public figure and have to post a fucking yeah. video or picture like, they're like she's not going through nothing yeah she's fine yeah it's like no it's my job i know i know business and i know my own personal and i'm capable just because i'm capable of separating yeah you know doesn't mean yeah i'm okay yeah um but i would agree what do you um feel like you're doing now that's helped you with your mental health um hmm. like earlier you said running and just letting your thoughts go yeah i yeah you know, I, I'm becoming a little bit more vulnerable as well on social media. I'm mm-hmm. trying. Mm-hmm. I'm really trying. And uh, I'm trying to... Uh, it's just fucking hard because people just talk sh- so much shit. Mm-hmm. But it's those little messages that I get where it's a uh, little uh, encouraging. Yeah. You know, so me, I will... Like, I, I, I do go to therapy. Okay. I do go to therapy. I, it's helped me out a lot. Um, See, pers- just a different perspective. 100%. You know, it, and I, I had to go... Th- I have to go to it because I don't know your industry Mm -hmm. much, but I know for in mine, it's a very male dominant sport. Mm -hmm. So to even express that I'm going through anything, it's like, oh my gosh, she's being an emotional. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know? Oh yeah. I'm sure with your, (laughs) yeah, I can already sense that. So like, she's just being a girl. Yeah. She's PMSing. I'm like, motherfucker. Yeah. 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 So, uh, it's it's I'm tr- I'm trying I am trying to be more vulnerable, but I'm realizing in my journey how a lot of not just females but male are a lot of men mm-hmm. are sending me messages like, hey, you know if this could stay private, but you're 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 helping me through this your yeah. stories and the, so those those it's those messages that help me out a lot too yeah. to continue to be vulnerable to the fans. no yeah I mean I didn't I, yeah, I didn't even think about that with our industry I mean it's male and females for me it's more of like you know. Uh, doing what I do does take a toll on my mental health, oh, right? 100%. Like all the pressures. And like I said, even like the things that people don't know that go on in your private life, family life, you know, there's a lot of stuff that it just adds up. Right. Yeah. And it's just that pressure. But I did therapy last year and it was um, one of the best decisions I could have made. I mean, you know, not everyone agrees to go to, not everyone wants to seek a therapist, but I do believe, I think li- I was listening to a lot of podcasts and they were like, um, Oh, I looked, I have my therapist and she recommended this. And then another person was like, I have my therapist and they recommended this. So I was like, okay, I need to find a therapist that works for me. And Mm -hmm. I went through, like, it was hard because I had to go through several until one clicked and she really helped me. And she really helped me 
face you know those demons that i call them and like i definitely feel like not only did they help me but they help my relationship how you interact with others Mm -hmm. and you start picking up the signs that you didn't know were there Mm -hmm. but i think it's great that you saw you 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 go to a therapist and i'm sure like you said it's a different perspective and it definitely will help you 100 percent. just because it is a lonely world yeah you know achieving trying to achieve something that is not normal yeah trying you know they say the, the the top is lonely and it fucking is yeah you know, not, not every not everyone is doing what we're doing. Yeah. Everyone. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. There's, you know, yeah, let yeah. me just get that out there right now. There's nothing wrong with having a normal job. And personally, I don't want that. I want more for my life. Oh, same. Yeah. So um, one brother's like, hey, you need to get a real fucking job. You know, he's very older, traditional. Oh, yeah. And my other brother is just a go-getter, just like me. So <clears throat> it's like if I have that, that opinion... In my own family, how am I not gonna have it again towards the world? Yeah, you know, with that mindset of like, yeah. oh, she ain't gonna be shit. Yeah, I go get a real job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So achie- achieving what I'm trying to achieve is not it's, it's not for the weak. No, or or even for even for you, you know. No, I mean, I tell Chris, I literally had this talk in the car with him two days ago, and I was like, and I'm not, I and I don't mean this any offense. People are built differently, but I, I could not do a nine to five job. No. Like, I know, like, we have our stresses and whatever it comes with the anxiety, I'm willing to take. That's how much I love what I do and I love the drive because I could not do a nine to five. Like, I'm just not built for a nine Mm -mm. to five. Some people are built like that's what they want and they're happy. And that's amazing that that if whatever you do makes you feel fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Awesome. But that for me would not make me feel fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Fulfilled. I've always wanted more out of my life. I like to when I get too comfortable, I get fucking scared. That's what I'm like. Okay, shit, shit, shit. What's next? Comfort. It gives me anxiety. It gives me horrible anxiety. And and I mean to the point. And this is why I also went to go uh, seek for therapy because there was a point last year in my life where I was uh, life just felt too good. (laughs) You know, it felt too good. Yeah. And there was, and I, I think there was like three months where I was sleeping. Maybe three hours, damn, four hours, and I would be laying down in bed. My hands would be shaking, anxiety to the yeah. roof, shaking, and I'll have panic attacks. It was horrible. It was fucking horrible, and I realized like I need to move. And again, that comes with n- n- finding a balance, yeah, right? Yeah. But I was like, I need to do something with myself. Mm-hmm. And then when I when I decided that, it's like life kind of took. It's like no, stop. Yeah. Right now, at least in my own journey. Uh-huh. So I'm, 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 yeah, I'm trying to figure out what the fuck I'm gonna do with my and, life right and now. That, <laughs> and that balance is hard for anyone. Yeah. You know, it's really hard. But I think, as like I said, things mm-hmm. come, things go. As long as you know, you wake up and you're. I think gratitude makes an important part oh into God. that. Yeah. Just being grateful for you, what you have, also kind of helps when you have those anxiety thoughts where it's like I'm being too comfortable. It's like. No, let's be a little bit more grateful for what mm-hmm. we have. And then like, yeah, let's keep pushing to yeah. get more. Okay. So I know in your IG bio, you have a fighting for a purpose. Mm-hmm. What is that purpose? Um, uh, I, I don't, <laughs> oh, is this going to be emotional? Yes, oh God, but, I didn't bring tissues. No, I feel like I'm really <laughs> emotional today too. Oh God. Uh, so I, uh, I say all the time when, uh, Oh my god! I can't even let it out. <laughs> Stop! You're gonna make me cry. Okay. Um, I say it all the time when um, yeah, oh my god! I can't even get it out. When life gets difficult, right? Because mm-hmm. life hasn't. Oh my god, <laughs> life hasn't been easy. Mm-hmm. I say it all the time. I, I already went through the worst. I think I even told you that yesterday, mm-hmm. you know. I went through the worst in my life. Nothing could bring me down. I lost my brother at 15, five years later. I lost my mom. And I believe, even with so much loss, deep in my core, that everything happens for a reason. Although I don't understand why they, you know, I'm re- I believe in God. Why God had to take them from my life so soon. I know it's molded me into the woman that I am today. So, my purpose is to keep my family's 
memory alive. How do I do that? My mother believed that I was great. She believed that I was great. And she believed in me in the moments that I didn't even believe in myself. I had three jobs. I was I didn't have a fucking car. I was walking to work. I was taking the bus. Like, we all started somewhere. Yeah, yeah. And my purpose is what a shame it would be to not achieve my full potential knowing that someone that was fighting for their life believed in me while they were going through it, you know, mm-hmm. holding my mother's hand while she's dying and giving me her words of to not just give up in life. It's like, how can I give up when someone that's laying there fighting for her life is telling me not to give up in my life? So that's my purpose. Thank you for sharing. I appreciate you sharing that. <laughs> Chris, you need to bring us tissue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bring um, some. Um, uh, is there a, the box in there? If not, bring some toilet paper, please. From the, toilet paper, the bathroom. Se va, se va quitar la pestaña. No, thank you so much for sharing. Um, I know you had shared a little bit with me um, at our go shoot, and then watching your story on YouTube, I was sobbing uncontrollably <laughs> that oh, day yeah. I got back home. Because I was watching your story. My friend Brittany was actually watching it with me. She was sobbing uncontrolled. She's like, I don't even know this girl. And I'm just like, holy crap, she's so strong. So I have never met anyone in my life as strong as you. Like The stuff that you've had to, I guess, like, I just got back from my dark sports shoot, too. And the stories that these people share, like, sometimes, like, some of us, you know, we nag about the dumbest shit. and don't realize, like, what people have had to go through to be where they're at. And I love that that's your purpose. I think that's what makes you a better fighter. No one's ever asked me that, you know that? Really? No one's ever asked me, like, what's your, like, why do you have that? In your bio, yeah. yeah. I was looking at uh, at that. And I am I like to pay attention to the d- little details. I like to have that personal touch because I'm sure you get to ask the same, like, oh, like fighting questions all the time. But I wanted, you know, this to be also an opportunity for, for people to really, you know, get to know you. So I appreciate you sharing that with me it means a lot so thank you you. okay do you feel more pressure as an athlete since you are a woman and representing the latino culture no no well let me just say i fucking thrive off pressure okay like i even said in one of my captions it's like give me the pressure because when i feel it i go harder i love being under pressure i love everyone like i've i've been doubted Uh because of my looks because you said it earlier People see you, they're like, oh, she's girly, she's feminine. Mm-hmm. Like, there's no way in hell. Like, mm-hmm. you know, Dana White said it on my on my uh, contender series when I was mm-hmm. fighting. They're like, dude, this girl's gonna get bodied. Like, sure enough, it's it's uh, it. I I think I think I have maybe fourteen total, fifteen wins, mm-hmm. one loss. Mm-hmm. But it's it's just like I thrive under pressure. Mm-hmm. I do so good. <laughs> I love it. Damn, it's that's like awesome. The more pressure, the more pressure. At least personally, just because I'm such a competitor and mm. I'm um. Again, I, I'm I'm striving mm. for greatness and nothing less. Mm. So, when there's so much pressure on you, that just goes to prove, like they're doubting you for a reason. They want you to fall for a reason. Mm-hmm. They don't believe in. They don't want to believe in you. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. So I I love the pressure and the fact that I'm I have such an amazing community behind me. Mm-hmm. The Latino, the Latin America, yeah. and I'm able to represent such a beautiful culture. Yeah, you know, and I and I'm also trying to keep it going. Where when I walk out, like, hey, this is who I am. Soy la, soy Latina. You know? I love that. Yeah, that's one of the things I love the most about you, like representing the culture. And I was like, oh, do you like? I remember, do you like banda music? And you were yeah. like, yeah. Like, yeah. No, I think it's also awesome. I like. I'm learning to thrive a little bit more under pressure. My thing is. Um, Sometimes, I, I don't know if you feel like this with social media, because I'm big about energy. Like, you said it yourself. People love to doubt you, mm-hmm. right? So, for me, it's like, I don't want that negative energy on me, because that's what I stress over. Like, are they wishing all? Are they wishing me bad? Is this negative energy going to get to me, right? But I need to think more like you. Like, fuck yeah. Like, I need I have to, shit to prove. Which I do, but like, I'm sure with you, like, you, you would have to be well to 
like under pressure to be able to fight good. Yeah. Because if not, then yeah, you're looked up on as weak or whatever. Hundred percent. And it's just one of those things where it's like, if 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 you look, if you take a step back mm-hmm. and you say, why is there so much pressure on me? Why are all these people? Because pressure is either the opinion of someone or a doubt of someone, right? Mm-hmm. Why is all these people coming coming at me like this? What's the pressure? You're you're moving up. You're elevating. Mm-hmm. And that's why you feel it so much. And to me, that's empowering. It's, fuck yeah. You know I, what I mean? Yeah. No, that's, I that's, literally... That's an empowering feeling. I love that you said that because you're right. Like, I feel the pressure when I'm doing more. Yeah. And this prep was hard because I was like, I don't want to share because I feel the pressure. And Chris like, no, if you're fucking... Sh- like, you need to. Yeah. That pressure is because you know you're doing something great. So share it. And I'm like, oh, God. And, and he's like, it also keeps you accountable because... You're going to do what you're mm-hmm. going to fucking say. So, and if you don't do it, people aren't going to fucking respect you. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay. No, I love that you said that. Yeah. I'm going to take that with me. Okay. So you have very powerful masculine energy. Is it hard for you to let that go at times and be more into your feminine energy? Like yeah. letting people take care of you. Yeah. Yeah. I, can, I can't, you know, the whole, especially cause it's a big thing right now, right? Like the femininity and the masculine. Mm-hmm. And, and at first it's like, oh my God, like. I was one of those like a woman can do what a man can. Yeah, that was that was me. Yeah, same. Yeah, <laughs> same, dude. Now, <laughs> trying to finding more of like the femininity of me in me and, um, yeah, I would say it is extremely hard. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I do believe, I strongly believe now that a man is built is and is a man for there's a reason why they're men. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I don't believe women could do what men can do. Mm-hmm. Are we capable of achieving great things? Absolutely. But does that mean, in my opinion, that we can go do what a man does? I don't know. Yeah. I love that I, you said I that. think being a woman is beautiful. A man can't mm-hmm. be what we are. Mm-hmm. We're beautiful creatures. We're able to create life. We're, you know? Yeah. We're, and I think um, as women in this new era, we're, they're, they're almost forgetting how beautiful it is to be a woman. Yeah. And... um. That's just my intake on it. And I, I do I, I did find it extremely hard. Yeah. I, I'm the same. And I was just talking to Chris about this too. Like mm-hmm. I was like, you know, how was a saying growing up? I don't know if it's as a Latino, I'm sure so many women can resonate with this. It's like women can do anything a man can do. Mm-hmm. And just because you're a man, you're not gonna boss me around. Uh, I think it's because it, you know, we grew up, I don't know, my dad was very machista. It's like same. if I say this wall uh, is red, even though it's black, it's gonna be fucking mm-hmm. red. And I was like, mm-hmm. hell no, that's that wall is black. Because yeah. I say it's like, you know, so I grew up almost like I wanted to be just like a man and almost like I was in a competition with men. Yes. And I've lived like that for so long. And it's honestly affected so much of my life. Yes. So much in, in a negative way, it, too, because I can't, I feel like I, I haven't allowed myself to be loved like I deserve to be loved. As the strong woman, woman that, that I, you are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I was telling Chris, you know, I was like, I'm tired of living this way. I was like, I'm just going to let you love me. And that doesn't mean that just because I'm not in this masculine energy, I'm not as strong as you, you know? it just It doesn't mean that. It just means... I'm going to let you be the man and let you take care of me when you need to take care of me. And I think that mindset is going to help me and it's going to help our relationship a lot more, but it is hard. Like it's extremely hard. It's easier said than done. Yeah. It's it's extreme. But I love that you said that it's the, I feel like, you know, you and I are just like on the same (laughs) way, but yeah, it's just hard. I I felt like I was always in competition with men. It's like, no, if I, I can be just as good, but you made a really good point. I think we forget that. It's such a beautiful thing to be a female. I love being a female. I wouldn't trade it for anything. And just because we're not, quote, unquote, as strong or whatever, it doesn't, like, physically or whatever, mm-hmm. it doesn't mean we're not, like, on the same level as men, you know? Yeah. And it's an important thing to, to remind ourselves that and to be like, okay, it's okay for for the man to take care of us. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I think that comes, at least for me, you know, coming um, from a strong Mexican background, mm-hmm. Same thing, me and my dad, just like Always, that. Yeah. But why? Por qué no, pa? Por no? I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. You know? It's like, well, I'm going to go do this. No. I'm like, and the whole, no, no. And, my, and then it's my brothers be like, well, I'm going to go do this. Same shit I want to do. Movies. Yeah. No. So it's like, well, I could be just as good as my brother. I'm going to be just as strong as my brother. I'm going to do just as, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think it, um, it, 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 it has affected me, just like you said. 
it, it has affected you in in a negative way. Yeah. Especially um, growing up with all all boys. Yeah, sure. So it it is, it's, it's something I'm learning mm-hmm. now, being 29. Same. You know. Yeah. That, like, do I want to be a woman? Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm in the I'm in I'm in the fighting industry and it's my career, but when I get home. I want to be a woman. I I, I want to cook for my man. Yeah. I want to nurture my man, and I want my man to take care of me. Yeah. You know that's yeah. that's what I crave now, and um, I I don't know. I just think it's beautiful being a woman and this new era of oh, why can't women do this? Mm. It's like because you're a fucking woman, like yeah. you know. Yeah. And to each their own, but that's just my intake on it. Yeah. No, I love that you said that. Okay, what would you say is the number one misconception people have about women fighters? Oh, they think <laughs> this one might bite me in the ass. But they think that we're all gay, we're all dykes. They think. Oh, really? Yeah, everyone thinks. I like, would have not thought you said that. Yeah, really. Yeah. Like uh, my best friend, he's he's gay. He's like, I pinches jotas. Yeah. Like Gary, you know, and yeah, uh, and he's gay himself, and he's just like, dude, they're just so masculine, and they're yeah. this and that, and he was like, dude, aren't you scared to fight them? And I was like. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. No. But I do. I do get that. You know. And even myself, they'll be like, "Damn, I thought you were gay." I was like, "What? Really? Yes. That's yeah." I they mean, they think I guess... a lot of us female fighters are gay. You know what's helped me? I think not have that misconception is the bodybuilding world because there's so many oh, women yeah. bodybuilders, and they're dating. Reg- they're married to regular men. Some men really love their woman being built like that. And I mean, I don't. I think like out of all the women bi- bodybuilders that I know, they all are like straight oh wow. you know so yeah. i think that i've never i don't think I've, I've ever been like oh yeah she's a lesbian but it's that's a good thing to know i was yeah. not expecting that i yeah. thought people were gonna be like oh they're like probably like what you said like weak and emotional whatever yeah. but no uh, it's that they, it's they, they, they i kid you not the amount of times people have told me once they get to know me right they're like dude I thought you were gay. Yeah. I was like, what the fuck would make you think I'm gay? <laughs> like, I don't know, you're a fighter. I was like, what? That's, that just makes no sense to me. Yeah. I'm like, oh my, I guess. Um, have you always been the type to add a glass? Like, you grow up with boys. Yeah. But your makeup, you do it so well, which is Thank something you. I love about you. Like, and I know, like, you know, like you said, people probably look at you like, oh, she's pretty, whatever, but you can fight. Like, I actually relate more to you because <laughs> you look like a beautiful female Thank and then you. you're fucking badass in the ring. Like, have you always, like, you said you were a tomboy. Yeah. When did that change? When were you like, okay, you know what? I want to do my makeup and my hair and look good. I'll, I'll say when, um, when, I no say, I don't know. Uh when i started like maybe like yeah (laughs) maybe when i was a teenager okay you know when i was a teenager i I started putting lashes on Uh uh-huh little lash extensions and Uh lip gloss Uh uh-huh the one from the little tube yeah you know the cherry one yeah and i'll put that lip gloss on and some fake lashes i I, yeah i would say maybe then i had been like in middle school yeah i started being like kind of girlier and when i got into high school they saw that i was getting real girly and Mm -hmm. my brothers were like don't leave the house yeah and i mean literally don't leave the house like school House, house, school. Dang. That was it. Yeah, maybe, sure maybe I could be in the front yard for a little bit. But the <laughs> second, like our neighbors, because we're close with our in our neighborhood with, uh-huh. uh, with friends. The second the boys will come over, it's mm-hmm. like get the fuck inside. Damn. Yeah. No, but I love it. I love that. Like I've seen your interviews and everything. Like you're always super well taken care of, and I think that that's so empowering too, because it teaches you just because you know I'm gonna fight or whatever doesn't mean. Like I think doing your makeup and hair is such a good important part of self care. Yeah, right? taking care of yourself, right? And it brings out, I'm sure, confidence in you mm-hmm. too. Yeah, it's just I like to present myself mm-hmm. good. Yeah, and how I don't want to be seen as the way I train. Yeah, you know that's that's it's I train and I I look busted, mm-hmm. hair up, yeah. scratches, whatever, sweaty. I'm I'm in gym clothes. All I mean I'm in gym clothes right now, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's. I, I like to do my makeup. I like to feel girly. I like to feel, you know, beautiful. Yeah. You know, inside and out. Yeah. And um, so when I fight with lashes on, I get a lot of shit for it, too. Girl, people hey, think, it's not bothering you. <laughs> it's not going in your eye. I know. It's just like people think I don't take my job serious or whatever, but it's just like... No, it's I, 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 I am my own business, mm-hmm. and this is how I want to be presented mm-hmm. as a beautiful woman athlete, yeah. a beautiful woman fighter. There's nothing wrong with that. You present yourself however you want, baby. But I'm, my life is pretty good right now. Yeah, yeah. you know, 
No, my brand, me, and I'm I'm good. And I think that's what I love about you because I'm the same. Like I like to present myself a certain way, even if I go the extra mile. It's like people are like, oh, you're always like not in a bad way. Like you're always so extra. You're always gonna be the best one done. I'm like, yes, baby, because why that makes not? me feel happy. Yes. I love doing the extra for myself. I'm not doing it for anyone else but myself because mm-hmm. it makes me so happy knowing that I put so much effort into myself. Yes, you know. And there would be times where uh, where I would say. You know, and, and I do go to this extent. Now, I am extra. I realize I'm extra. I like expensive shit. Yeah. There's a reason why I work hard. Yes. You know, like, and there's nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. It's Again, it's my life. I have one and I'm going to live it how I want. Mm-hmm. So now it's like, if I have an opportunity where I'm just going to go do something, I don't know, normal, mm-hmm. I'm going to get dolled up. Mm-hmm. Why? Because I live in the gym 24-7 mm-hmm. and I want to, I want to be extra. I want to do the most. Yeah. No, yeah, no. I, I'm, my mom always said too. She's like, I don't know if you ever heard this, but it's uh, my mom just says it. She's like, you should always siempre te debes dar la manita de gato. I don't know what that means, but she's like, anytime you go out, at, like she taught me this when she let me wear makeup at 15. She's like, anywhere you go, you want to be presentable. It doesn't matter if you're going to Walmart. Put on a little bit of mascara. Put on a lip gloss. Like if your hair is not done, put it up in a ponytail. Look presentable mm-hmm. because the last thing you want is to find someone. And then you look the way that you look and not be happy with it. Mm-hmm. And I've taken that everywhere. I mean, I have my days where, like, if I'm going to go train hard, obviously bun up because I'm yeah. going to be sweating here in the humidity. But some days I'm like, you know what? I don't care if my makeup going to be running. I want to look good today. Yeah. And it doesn't bother you. Mm-mm. You know, it's me. It's my face. It's my. If I have makeup sweating down my clothes, that's me, you know? Yeah. But I think it's an important part of self-care is, like, absolutely. you know, you got to be the absolutely. person you want to be. All right. We're almost done. Have you ever <laughs> been in a bar fight? Oh, yeah. Yes? Yeah. You know, Arely was like, can you throw that question in for her? Because she's like, I want it because she's such a badass if she's ever been in a bar fight. Let me just say this, though. Let me just say this. I am not a confrontational person uh-huh. whatsoever. You know, last thing I like to do is start fights. If anything, I my friends are, you know, witness, witness, no, no, oh, they're okay. witnesses. Oh, okay. and, they'll tell, and they'll tell me, like, Tracy, don't do it. Tracy, let us handle it. And then they'll, like, handle whatever's yeah. going on. But... <clears throat> Yeah, I have. I want to say the most recent one was maybe three years ago, four okay. years ago. No, maybe three and a half. Three and a half to four years ago. Um, me and a friend of mine, were. she was getting in a fight. Oh, okay. And she was like, Tracy, don't get involved. Like, let's not get involved. I was like, all right. I I walk away and I look back because it's so loud, right? And it's mm-hmm. dark. I look back. And she's over there just but two, but two of these fucking girls, my friend and the other girl, just hitting each other in the head. Just... And I'm like, oh, you see those Santos. Wait, though, your friend is holding on this other girl? On, on her hair. Okay, your friend right. has the other girl by her hair. By her hair. Uh-huh. They both, I and then, uh-huh. the, they have the, each other's chungles. Oh. And they're just swinging at each other. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And I'm standing there, and I'm in heels, hoops, I'm dressed up, we're at the <laughs> bar, work, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, my God, I go. I told her I wasn't jumping in. Yeah. And then I look over to, like, on this side, and I just see a group of girls coming. And I'm like, oh, my God. And I, I'm, you know, I'm not going to say if I got involved or not, but it was just, it was one punch drop for yeah. everybody. Damn, yeah. That's the thing. I like people horrible. probably do not, if they don't know you, they're like, they probably don't know. Yeah. It uh, was horrible. Dude. I mean, that's awesome though, to be like not scared. I feel like that's so awesome. Like <laughs> Aureli always instigates, Aureli's like, I mean, you met Aureli, she's like, she's like today i want to go out and i want to pick a fight okay, hey. I'm like, but she just fucked her i'm like Aureli, cállate, because you're going to be in the corner not even like getting involved and you're going to get my ass involved and i you know i'm not a fighter or so it's like it's so funny but i think it'd be cool too i was just telling uh chris i was like i need to take like maybe like a self-defense class because i think it's important to know like if the situation ever happened how, how to, to defend, take care yeah. yeah how to defend yourself how to take care of yourself but i was wondering i was like mm, i wonder i was like can you ask her if she's ever been in a bar fight because yeah, i think yeah. that'd be so cool we could bring her with us we could have like no stop <laughs> okay so this is a little fun part just to end the podcast it's going to be a, a fun lightning round so you're gonna i'm gonna give you two options and you're gonna say which one is better than the other i okay, okay? punched in the face or punched in the boob ah uh, face Okay. Yeah. The, oh, I know. I've been punched in the boob and I'm like, oh, oh God. Face. So you'd rather get punched in the yeah. face. Okay. Kicked in the vagina or kicked in the face? Kicked. Oh, kicked in the face. Really? Yeah, it hurts. <laughs> like, it drops me. I feel like that. It's, it's happened before. 
Does it not hurt when they punch you, like kick you in the nose? Well, they they don't kick you head like head on. Oh, okay. Normally kicks come, kicks from come from around. Oh, and because okay. my hands are up, like, it hurts. Oh, but, it but it's more on the yes, side. Yes. Okay, okay. So it's not like direct. Mm-hmm. See, because I was like, oh my god, if it's like on my nose, that's when I'm terrified. No, I'm I can't imagine my... a toe in my. F- okay. I haven't had one yet. Okay, <laughs> you're like haven't had one. Okay, stabbing your toe versus getting punched in the face. Uh, Getting punched in the face. Yeah, yes. still damn. <laughs> Toes hurt. Yeah, they do hurt. I guess I'm, I've been afraid this whole time to get punched in the face. I'm just going to get punched in the face. No, and then the one time I told, like say I have like like a sprained toe or something. Uh-huh. I'm just like, oh my God, this is the worst thing. <laughs> it's the worst. It is, dude. Uh, it Nothing takes you down like unless <laughs> when you stub your, that last yes, toe. Yes, it's like, just in the corner. I'm going you're going like, down. <sighs> you're like, I'm going down. Uh, this is it for me. This is the end. Okay. Brazilian wax mm. or getting punched in the face. And now I, I think you're gonna say getting punched in the face. Yeah, I feel like Brazilian wax. Yeah, more. they fucking hurt. No, they I would say like getting that. punched in the face, 100. percent Okay, running or jujitsu? I well, what I rather do? Mm-hmm. I would rather run. Okay, I'm a run. I love running. Yeah, running. Is fun. It's just okay. it. Uh, yeah, my life is so fast. It's the only thing where I don't have my phone. I have my Apple Watch. I have my headphones, and I just disappear. Yeah, for like 45 minutes, an hour, whatever, and I just go. I know. I People love don't it. understand. I think running is not just about like the exercise. It's like such. It's so good for your mental health, especially if you run outside. I can see on a treadmill how it's boring, yeah. but if you get outside, like it's and just the, the sun best hit you. Yeah. feeling. Like you yeah. feel like you're alive. And let me just say, I used to fucking hate running. I hated running. It wasn't. It was a thing where I had to do it because mm-hmm. it was like my cardio for fighting and cutting weight. Now I can't. I can't go. I run every other day. Okay. Like it's a part of my everyday routine. Hey, you said it. You need. You want to buy another house? Come move to Texas, girlfriend. <laughs> you're running, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Jamaica mm. or horchata? Oh, Jamaica. Okay. I love I want Jamaica. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's a good one. And last one. Tacos or torta? Oh. Uh, that was hard. Oh, torta. Torta? I love a good torta. A good torta? torta, torta? De jamón, con quesito fresco, oh, crema. And, oh. and, and aguacate. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit, so good. Okay. Yeah. Well, that is all for our questions today. <laughs> How do you, you, did, you did so well. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate you coming fun. so much and just sharing your story with us. I mean, I'm sure... Everyone is going to love hearing what you have to say. Yeah. You're just so down to earth. Thank I love you it. so Thank much. You so Thank much. you for having me in yeah. your home and on the show. Yeah. Appreciate it. We'll bring our back, guys, okay? Um, but, yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. I'll put all Tracy's um, Instagram and details down below so that you guys can go check her out. And I really hope that you uh, enjoyed this episode, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye. <laughs> Yeah.